The very first thing that comes to our mind when we talk about economic geology is why do we actually need to study economic geology as a separate discipline? So to address this why, the first thing that we need to understand is the occurrence of ores. The second is the formation, the abundance and the process for extraction. Based on this, we understand that economic geology is a really significant uh, concept because we do understand the distribution, the origin and the patterns associated with the geological formation. So, in what zones does the mineral lie, whether they are in the venations, what are hydrothermal veins and so on, we would understand as we proceed further. But let's address few of the important things. One very common term that we come across when we talk about economic geology is minerals. What are actually minerals? Minerals are nothing but they are homogeneous inorganic compounds that exist. And these inorganic compounds do have a definite chemical composition and a fixed atomic arrangement. When I say fixed atomic arrangement, that means the structure is well arranged and well established and their chemical composition is also well known. So two things very well established under minerals. One is the chemical composition and the second is the crystal structure. The structure of the crystal which we, were, we have understood in detail under crystallography. So, these are the two things based on which we understand minerals. Now minerals are highly abundant but the radius of the earth we say goes up to 4000 miles approximately of which uh, the highest boring bore that is the hole in the ground that we have reached is only 7300 feet. The commonly found minerals are up to a depth of 6000 feet. That means despite a very huge depth or a very uh, high radius we can say we are able to extract only from the crust of the earth. That's again really important to note that our maximum extraction occurs only from the crust. Now what are the ways under which the formations are important. Now the individual mass that exists, this could be either in the form of strata. In our structural geography, we have already seen what are stratas. So when the beds are arranged one after the other, in a sedimentary structure they are called as strata. They could be in the form of veins where you have the deposition, uh, the gaps which are filled with magma and these veins can also be in the form of lenticular masses right there can be various geological formations that are seen so the most important thing under economic geology is the deposition that we would understand the second is the formation and the last uh, the formation as well as the deformation both of the things would go together and the last one is the alterations in the structure in the deposition if any. Now coming on to some of the terminologies before we start and dive into the real economic geology. The first concept that we would understand is ore deposit. Now what are ore deposits? If in a rock there is sufficient quantity of mineral that is found and this mineral can be extracted profitably then we say it is a ore deposit. So ore is nothing but the uh, part of the mineral which can be profitably extracted from the rock sample. Now what is GAN? GAN is the useless part or which is actually not required and is however present. We call this as GAN. The next is tenor. Now tenor is a very important term. It is the amount of metal which is present in the ore and this metal is expressed in the form of percentage. Now, tenor of the ore is the lowest permeable amount of a metallic content that is found. But the most important idea under tenor of an ore is the proportion of metal which is present in the ore is called as tenor. Now, as we proceed with ore which is uh, the mineral which can be extracted from the rock profitably, 
has certain terminologies. Let's go through these terminologies one by one. The first is the terminology called as over dressing. Now what happens when you have a wound, you dress the wound. We call that process as dressing. So what do you do? Any dust, any impurities you try to remove. The same happens in the over dressing. It is actually removal of the waste and the idea is to conserve only the real ore which is present and therefore this is called as ore dressing. The next is grading. We grade. Let's say even in a school when you study you are in class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4. The same is called as grade in different countries. So the same happens with ore. The ore is graded that means how much mineral is present in an ore the amount of mineral which is present would determine the grade, right? The next is the term known as ore body. Ore body is the natural concentration of the ore which is present.